welcome to our five minute sustainability initiative. We are students from the ISSN and we are here to answer the question, what can I do about biodiversity loss and climate change? We know that our governments and big businesses have to do better. They have to work faster and harder to lower greenhouse gas emissions. But we also have to play our part. Individual actions may seem insignificant, but they matter. If we take action and consciously live a lower carbon lifestyle, we can help to create new social norms and behaviours. We can find better ways to live with less impact on our environment. We can show others what's possible. Most of us like to fit in with the crowd. Anything you do that cuts your carbon makes it easier for others to do the same. Today we are talking about how you can address climate change by changing your emailing behaviour and deleting data. Writing an email, sending an email, reading emails, storing emails, all use energy. This energy comes from burning fossil fuels and this releases greenhouse gases. We have a specific unit for measuring temperature and this unit is degrees Celsius. However, we also have a specific unit for measuring greenhouse gas emissions and this unit is CO2e or carbon dioxide equivalent. The carbon footprint of an email can vary a lot. The carbon footprint of one spam email can release 0.03 grams of carbon dioxide equivalent. A short email is a bit more at 0.3 grams. 17 grams for a long email that takes you 10 minutes to write and three minutes to read. This isn't a lot. However, when you consider the number of emails sent and received, it's easy to see how this can all add up. Our average email traffic is equivalent to driving 10 to 128 miles in a small petrol car. Putting this into perspective, in 2019, the world's 3.9 billion email users sent 294 billion emails each day. Over half of these were spam. So the average email user received about 75 emails per day. If we consider that the emails take the sender just 10 seconds to write and the individual a mere five seconds to read, then the carbon footprint would be three kg of carbon dioxide equivalent per year or 12 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent globally. So let's cut down the number of emails we send. When you can, talk to people instead. One UK study shows that if every adult in the UK sent one less thank you email, it would save 16,433 tonnes of carbon dioxide. That's equivalent to taking 3,334 diesel cars off the road. It's good to say thank you, but by simply cutting down on unnecessary niceties such as thank you emails, we could collectively save a lot in carbon emissions. So try to reduce the size of your emails and avoid sending large messages. Send links to files rather than adding them as attachments. That helps. If your inbox is cluttered with emails, one simple way to reduce the energy we use and the amount of greenhouse gases we release is to delete them. Those emails are stored in data centers and that requires energy. Data centers are the biggest drivers of demand for electricity in the national grid. They consume 14% of Ireland's electricity supply. That's more than all of the housing in rural areas. By 2030, data centers could account for 30% of all the electricity consumption in Ireland. So back to emails. Emails that aren't deleted are stored, and this costs energy and has a carbon footprint. Deleting emails saves energy and therefore reduces carbon dioxide emissions. The average email is about 75 kilobytes. We have 1,200 students in our school. If we all deleted 100 emails, that equates to 9 gigabytes and 288 kilowatt hours, which saves 0.2 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent. Have a deleting day to take down your carbon emissions. Take one minute now to discuss how you are going to take this action, as an individual, as a class, or as a school. It's important that we have a plan on how we're going to take action, rather than just talking about it.